Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that ongoing and upcoming severe weather because there is still more on the way. There's also a very, very major storm expected for the central and eastern United States coming up very shortly, which is going to bring a massive snowstorm, potentially one of the biggest of the entire winter that we've just had, uh, and especially, obviously, we're already in spring, but it is going to be the one of the biggest ones of the winter for sure. Uh, and that's also going to bring a lot of flooding and other impacts alongside it as well that we need to talk about in this video. Anyways, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day... I want to know how much do you think is the maximum amount of snowfall we see with this upcoming snowstorm is? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look at our live radar imagery here. And as you can see, we have plenty of this precipitation going on up here in the northwest. We see some of it down here for the southeast and south central United States, even down here in Florida as well. Uh, and then we see some of that offshore of the east coast as well. Here. Then we're seeing some lake effect snowfall and some snow showers up here in the northeast as well. So there is a whole lot going on. Now I will remind you guys right now before we really break it down that on our Patreon page I've been trying to post on there. I'm going to start posting daily on there. But today we're going to be posting all of the snowfall total maps from all of the major models for this upcoming big snowstorm that's going to be really impactful for the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, Northeast, Central United States, even portions of the Southeast and the Deep South as well. It's going to bring so many impacts to so many different people. So we will be posting the total snowfall maps over there from each individual major model and also the total rainfall there as well that can be expected because flooding is a possibility as well. So if you are interested in that, join our Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Thank you. Now let's get into the northwest first things first. We're going to just zoom in here. And as we can see, there's a lot of precipitation moving onshore. A lot of this is kind of just lingering, uh, especially in here. We can see it's very stationary. This isn't moving very much compared to these areas. Uh, even here in between, we do see some areas that are just kind of hanging out, but we do see some areas that are moving a little bit more rapidly, like these regions here. Uh, but generally, there's quite a bit of rainfall and snowfall in this region, mostly East of this line is snow, west of that line is more rain, um, but there's plenty of precipitation around for Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, and South Dakota as well. This is all worth noting. Now, let's go ahead and take a look down here at some of the four corner states because we have had some snowfall in these regions. Actually, I need to draw a bigger circle because this has been around for a lot of regions in here near Albuquerque, uh, Pueblo, if that's how you say that, um, Garden City. Um, all of these regions here in New Mexico, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, and I don't think any have been in Texas, but maybe the Panhandle of Texas has had some snow showers at times there. Very, very tippy top uh, northwest corner there of the Panhandle of Texas has potentially had some uh, snowfall showers in there. Let's go ahead and move down. First off, we'll look at Texas here. You can see some of these thunderstorms really moving in. Um, I still haven't heard thunder this year here in Virginia. I'm very excited to hear my first thunderstorm. I love thunderstorms, guys. When they're not causing damage, I absolutely love them. Um, and I can't wait for my thir first thunderstorm. So I, I'm very jealous of you guys up here that you're having any sort of thunderstorm activity. Uh, I really wish we were having that. But I know with patience, it will eventually happen here in Virginia. But it's just not happening yet. Now, as we approach some of the other Gulf states, we can see that some of these showers have been moving up north here as well. There's been a couple of thunderstorms that have fired up, especially here in Alabama and Mississippi there, as you can see. Coming just off the Gulf there, we've had some of those really fire up in that region. Uh, and we're going to have to see what those ones do a little bit later on in the day today. Now, as we move down to Florida, we can also see that there's been some thunderstorm activity here. I love that you can see the turning right here. Uh, it's really interesting when you have such a small region having such a huge turn in those thunderstorms. This is where that cold front is probably about right here. So that's trying to move offshore just like this. Um, but these areas are just heading northward from the Gulf. Um, and then they're kind of hooking up with that cold front. Uh, very interesting setup there. Um, but that is what's causing that rotation there, which is, which is pretty interesting. We can see the rest of that cold front, um, kind of is probably along here. 
we could see a lot of these center storms still from, from the shoreline. Um, these passed through last night. These are some uh, showers that are still just sticking around up here. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, we have some for Kentucky, West Virginia, and Virginia there as well. Just some minor showers. Uh, but really, uh, another thing worth talking about for sure is these snowfall showers all around here, mostly lake effect related. Uh, we can see New York and Pennsylvania as well as Vermont, New Hampshire, especially have seen that, but especially New York here uh, where we've had heavy snowfall here for some regions. Um, and that's likely causing accumulation in a few spots, I would guess. Uh, so that's definitely worth noting for the Adirondacks and near the Catskills, also the Finger Lakes regions there near Syracuse as well, all having that heavier white here that we're seeing on the radar, that's indicating heavy snowfall, and that's been going on for hours. So I do anticipate that there has been some accumulation in this region for sure. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the modeled guidance in a moment. We're going to go over that major upcoming storm, as well as a few other things in the pattern, and then we're going to break down the severe weather that's coming up still. And here we are taking a look at that model guidance. We can see this storm here in the East Coast. It's still showing it because this was the 0Z runs. So this was last night. This is going to be by approximately this afternoon. We can see that storminess there entering in through the Gulf states there. That's that those thunderstorms that we were taking a look at. Offshore of the East Coast, we can see that cold front still around as well. We do see some snowfall here for the Northwest and down through the Rockies. We see this very, very frequently where... Uh, we see the storminess extend down through the Rockies, starting at the northwest and moving its way down as well. Uh, now, as we as time moves on, we can see this precipitation moves up towards the northeast as we approach uh, this weekend. This is going to be about Wednesday. We can see a lot of rainfall already taking place for this region in here, potentially thunderstorms as well. We see that snowiness still around in there as well out west. Let's continue this on even further, and we can see this actually becomes a snowstorm here for the northeast eventually. This is going to be by the time we're reaching about Wednesday afternoon on March 9th here. We can see a lot of rainfall as well here for the southeast still, like I mentioned. Let's go ahead and keep going with this. We see that snowfall has moved further and further north up into New England. Again, if you want to see those total snowfall maps for all the major models that will be on our Patreon page, and you can join that by clicking the button in the description and in the pinned comments down below, uh, clicking that link to the Patreon page and check it out today. We can see this snowstorm is diving down southward there, out west. So we're going to have to see what this does. Uh, this storm moves basically offshore by this point. Uh, but we're going to start to see this storm build in in here. And this is going to be that very major storm. And this is going to be starting out by Friday afternoon. So Friday afternoon there. This is by the time we're reaching Saturday morning. We could see heavy snowfall from Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama all the way up through New England here. Very interior storm though. And this is extremely heavy snowfall. Uh, this could be a historic snowstorm actually for March in my opinion. I don't know if I've ever seen snowfall reaching into the deep south in the month of March, so it could truly bring it into historic range. We do have two areas of low pressure primarily here and here, uh, so these are moving like this. We see a massive trough. This is what the jet stream is doing right now, just about like that, bringing cold air right in here, and this is what it's allowing for this snowfall to reach so far south, is there's so much cold air available. Even down into here, we have below freezing temperatures, so this is just a very extreme situation. And again, flooding along the eastern seaboard is going to be very possible, basically east of this line here in this yellow circle. Uh, low pressure systems about here. We are going to have heavy, heavy rainfall coming down as well as heavy snowfall just to the west of these regions. We see a 983 millibar low pressure center by that point here offshore of New England, um, bringing just incredible storminess here along the eastern seaboard. Um, and then eventually this moves up where we see snowfall throughout this region with very deep cold here, um, bringing snowfall to New England, especially there and in, in the rest of the Northeast. So if you want to see the total snowfall maps, uh, we're going to be going over those in the Patreon page, like I said, and, to, and total rainfall as well. Now we get into a bit of a quieter pattern for a while here afterwards, talking Sunday, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even what takes place by this point is we, th we see the jet stream entirely flip here or we get back to these very warm temperatures out east. After all that action is said and done, we will get very spring-like temperatures moving back into the east. A little bit of cold air moving in from the west here uh, to these regions. And that's the current setup with basically no storms to speak of. So we could get into a quieter pattern. And then we get this going on at the very end of the model run. Well, some of this going on down here. 
This is going to be by about Friday, March 18th. But basically, after that major storm, around um, around the 12th, Saturday the 12th is primarily when that's happening, but also on Friday the 11th, Friday the 11th through the 12th, and into a bit of the 13th. After that point, we're basically going to move into a much quieter pattern for about five to seven days at least, um, where things will be able to cool off uh, out west, and they'll really start to warm up out east, and then we're going to have to see what happens from that point forward. Now... Let's go ahead and take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. Now, for day one, here's what we're taking a look at. A general thunderstorm risk here for the southeast where those thunderstorms are popping up. Again, they're moving in like this um, from the Gulf Coast. So that is why we're seeing this. We even have a marginal risk actually here for coastal regions of Alabama, Mississippi, and portions of Louisiana as well as the Panhandle of Florida. That's just day one. Um, and we can take a look. We can try to take a look at what this is for. This loads in. So we have a... 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there in Alabama, Mississippi, Panhandle, Florida, and Louisiana. Let me see if we have a chance of hail. No chance of hail, but we do have a 2% chance of tornadoes there. I will say that. So we're going to have to watch for that as well. Now, as we move towards day two, we have a, a general thunderstorm risk again here for the southeast here. We also have one here for Utah and Colorado. And then we have a larger marginal risk here for North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, and even, or sorry, better yet, Alabama, a tiny bit of Mississippi, and even Louisiana. Mississippi and Alabama are two of those states that I really, really get mixed up sometimes. Um, so that's pretty difficult for me. But we do have a marginal risk for severe weather in there. We can also take a look at what that is for. So let's take a look. Probably wind. Yeah, 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location of damaging wind. Uh, we do have a hail chance, though. 5% of hail and 2% of tornadoes. So day two might be a little bit more well-rounded. We obviously have a larger region, and there's a chance of all three modes of severe weather, so we're going to have to watch for that closely. Now day three, we do have a general thunderstorm risk still for these same regions, but no marginal risk here, which is where we don't really expect severe weather. It is possible, but we don't really expect it. Then we have a day four probability outlook here where the Storm Prediction Center is highlighting this region in particular for potential severe weather, at least a slight risk of severe weather down here. Um, Florida, Mrs. Er, Alabama, oh my goodness, Georgia, South Carolina, and Southern North Carolina there. Uh, and that's going to be valid Friday morning all the way through the day on Friday and overnight fr Friday into Saturday. So we're going to be watching for that very, very closely, guys. Um, that's going to be at least a slight risk probably in this yellow region. And then a marginal risk and general thunderstorm risk will be outside of that. But only time will tell what this will mean moving forward but we're going to be tracking this over the coming days so be sure to smash that like button be sure to subscribe to keep up with the daily uploads with us and daily updates on all of these things for today's confidence tab we're at a four out of six obviously uh, and for today's comment of the day i asked you guys how major do you think the snowstorm could be and james Marr said i believe it could be very major especially for the interior northeast and the ohio valley lots of coastal flooding also expected for the east coast we touched on all of those things today. And of course, like always, James Moore is on top of things. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lurley the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Dominic Carnes as well. I would also thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah, Michael Kudalasa, Catbite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Gary's, and John Khaleesi also. I would also to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Finn, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.